I'm Sachiko Hayashi, student from Nara Women's University. My talk is on the ozone and uh, in the East Asia. Um, so today's my talk includes uh, two parts. First part, and uh, I got, I'm going to show you the topospheric ozone data of East Asia obtained from ozone zones and the aircraft MOSAIC measurements. And the second part, I'd like to show you some innovative results from the OMI measurements. So uh, the second part is most important, I think, and so I'd like to uh, spend much more time in the second part. Okay, uh, this is a time, time height uh, cross section of the ozone uh, in the monthly basis. So, uh, so those data are obtained from the four, oops, four uh, ozone sound stations uh, organized by Japan Meteorological Agency, and some others are taken from our uh, from a mosaic aircraft measurements. So you can see uh, from north to south. Uh, in, the, in the particular, particularly in the northern part, you will find a uh, very uh, mm -hmm, uh, clear, uh, clear feature of stratospheric ozone intrusion, and in particular in, in mm, spring. And also, you will find a uh, very, very high concentration of ozone near surface in Beijing or other large cities in Japan. So. Um, we are now collecting more stations data of uh, Taipei, Hong Kong for ozone sound data, and Bangkok, H Hanoi, and Singapore, and etc. Uh, for from mosaic uh, aircraft measurements. And now we are arranging and uh, statistical data based on Turkey's statistics, uh, like this. So you can uh, the uh, red shows the mean, and uh, those uh, spots are outliers. So uh, we can now uh, we want to uh, look at the frequencies of the outliers uh, to understand the you know the eventual ozone enhancement, and after those data are archived, I'd like to um, uh, in near future I'd like to open this this kind of uh, uh, statistical data uh, for the people who are interested in uh, an ozone issue in Asia. Okay. Um, I like to talk. Uh, okay, I I show the ozone sound aircraft measurements, but uh, those data should give us useful information on profiles. But we cannot know horizontal distribution, and satellite measurements play an important role in ozone monitoring over large areas. And so far, there are some uh, uh, satellite data uh, available for tropospheric column ozone. However, I'd like to uh, address the following two important issues. First, uh, tropospheric ozone can vary significantly according to stratospheric ozone intrusion near the subtropical jet. This is an example of uh, uh, the climatology of tropospheric column ozone derived, go, de derived from GO. And black shows the subtropical jet. Subtropical jet are often situated over, over uh, Beijing and Tokyo and the big cities uh, in, the, in the East Asia. So the situation in, in East Asia is a little complicated uh, because we cannot uh, uh, distinguish the upper part and the lower part from the topospheric column ozone. And secondly, uh, the retrieval scheme of satellite data includes large smoothing errors. So the retrieved ozone enhancement signal in the lower troposphere can be affected by that in the uh, upper troposphere. But recently, um, Sean Liu et al. Uh, published in two, uh, 2010 successfully retrieved ozone profiles for 24 layers from OMI spectra with uh, multiple layers in the troposphere. They applied optimal estimation with climatology uh, for a priori. The 24th layer, the lowermost layer, is corresponding to a uh, delta about six ki uh, three kilometers above the surface. And the uh, 23rd is corresponding to three to five or six, and 22nd is uh, five to eight or nine, uh, depending on uh, the meteorological conditions. And I'd, I'd like to show you some results from the level, level three archived data, one by one degrees in latitude and longitude. The gridded data were screened out 
uh, by the criteria of, effic uh, of efficient cloud uh, fraction, less than 0.2, and also on the RMS uh, defined by the ratio of uh, uh, average residual, uh, fitting residual to uh, OME measurement error. Okay, so this is again the mosaic data in 2005. Unfortunately, after uh, November 2005, uh, there is no data available uh, in over Beijing. Uh, so I, I'm going to show you the, the data in 2005. Um, mosaic data in Beijing shown clear enhanced ozone in the lower troposphere in June, like this. And this is an example of extremely high ozone and CO on 22nd June 2005. So red line shows the profile of ozone, and the peak, is, uh, peak reaches almost 2,000 ppb. And CO is in green, is the peak is uh, almost uh, 1 ppm. So our big question is, can we detect it from OMI? So uh, some people, um, some, pe some of you might, may say, and, oh, it is not possible, and it's ridiculous. So no one expected uh, it is possible to detect the lower most ozone from space. But after very, very careful examination, I finally got the answer. Yes, we can. OK, let's go back to the direct uh, comparison between, uh, between o, uh, o mosaic and OMI. So uh, we picked up. Coincidental 34 cases in 2004 and 5, and uh, you can see that as a horizontal axis is a mosaic, and the vertical axis is o uh, OMI retrieval. Okay, you can see a reasonable, a good correlation. However, this is partly because of the the, the uh, large seasonality implicitly involved uh, in the, in the climatology, so a priori. Okay, then I, I like to introduce the delta ozone here, defined as the difference of the, uh, between the retrieval and the a priori. So in this case, in the, the right panels show uh, the, the correlation between uh, the enhancement of ozone from climatology obtained from mosaic and delta ozone obtained from OMI. So as I already showed, the mosaic show the big ozone variability in the lower most layer, so that there is a big variety, but delta ozone from OMI can follow it. So the linearity is very good. Of course, this is underestimate. This line is not, you know, it, this is not a uh, one-to-one. -one. So this is a big, uh, very underestimate. However, there is a signal. So I believe that delta ozone is good indicator to show our, uh, to find uh, the enhancement of, of ozone. This is global map of delta ozone for 22nd layer, 23rd layer, 24th layer. So the most um, outstanding areas in the enhancement of delta ozone is Central Eastern China, Qatar, Tropical Africa, East Coast, and so on. So very, very reasonable. But you may say, oh no, it is not in the 24th layer. So in terms of averaging kernels, we can learn a little bit about it. So you will see that, you can see that the uh, rows of averaging kernels show that it is very difficult to distinguish, distinguish uh, each layer individually for the lower part of the atmosphere. And also, uh, so uh, the ozone enhancement, uh, sorry, um, and the columns of averaging, averaging columns also tell us that the enhancement of 24th layer will affect uh, the, the, can affect on ozone in the upper layers, in the 23rd or 22nd layer. However, the, for the enhancement of ozone of UTLS, the peak layer should be higher than 22nd layer and never down below. So if we can find a peak layer at the 24th or 23rd layer, it is a, a, a big evidence, that it is a clear evidence that the, the signal comes from, from the down below. Okay, so where is subtropical jet? This is NSF reanalysis 
on the 22nd June 2005 over uh, on the 200 hectopascal. And the red shows the subtropical jet location. Okay, and the meaning, meaning on a peak, uh, peak of the, uh, the maximum wind speed on the 200 hectopascal. And this is a layer peak of tropospheric ozone. And uh, this uh, area is uh, screen, uh, screening uh, from the criteria of enhancement of tropical, uh, to sorry, uh, um, tropospheric column ozone larger than five Dobson unit. So again, you can find a uh, uh, delta ozone, uh, delta ozone here. Uh, delta uh, high delta ozone region is here, but the, the color shows a peak layer. So in a, uh, central east China, the peak layer height is 23rd layer. Uh, over the Western Pacific, uh, the, uh, the Western Pacific, uh, the Western Pacific Ocean ozone ozone enhancement here is corresponding to a uh, uh, subtropical jet. But the peak layer appears at around 19 or something. So the color is blue here. Then over central eastern China, the peak appears at the 23rd layer. This, is, this suggests ozone enhancement is not happening in the upper troposphere, but in the lower troposphere. OK, so the, in terms of the statistical data, in, the, uh, the in June, for whole one month, the most frequent peak layer in June is uh, in 2005 is 23rd layer is this color okay then I'm going to show you uh, the the monthly mean uh, picture in 2005 in January February March April uh, May June July August September October November December you find that uh, low ozone in winter high ozone in summer it's very clear. And also, June is most outstanding in the ozone enhancement. Now why? What happening in June? So one possible answer would be a open crop residue burning after harvesting of winter wheat. OK, so this is, a, again, the monthly mean of June 2005 in the ozone retrieval at 24th layer. And this is the peak layer number. And this is a mopid seal and hot spot counts. So you can find uh, a large number of hot count, hot spot uh, number uh, from the MODIS. And that corresponding to an uh, mopid enhancement of a uh, mopid CO. So additional ozone precursors emission from the uh, open crop residue burning um, may have caused uh, uh, the, the, the production of uh, ozone. So this result is very consistent with the result uh, obtained by MTX 2006, uh, published in Kana by Kanaya in ACP. Okay. So uh, last week uh, we had a, a meeting in, in Maryland to celebrate a 10-year anniversary of, of uh, EOS Aura satellite. So now OMI has 10 years data record. So I will show you the, 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 the June, June uh, uh, monthly mean in June from 2005 to 2013, like this. So now those data are now available. Um, then uh, we can now are doing uh, the analysis on the long-term trend and year-to-year -year -year variability. OK, in summary, the OMI products retrieved by Liu uh, revealed a spatial and temporal variations in ozone distributions in multiple tropospheric layers. Comparison of the OMI derived ozone of uh, Beijing with the mosaic measurements show good correlation. The maps of delta ozone, meaning an enhancement of ozone, uh, delta ozone distribution in the lower troposphere were obtained from OMI retrieval in this study. The ozone enhancement of uh, uh, central eastern China was clear in June every year, associated with the enhancement of carbon monoxide and hot spots. This suggested that a considerable portion of the enhancement could be attributed to the emissions of ozone precursors from residue burning after the harvesting of winter wheat in these regions. The OMI ozone retrievals are available for almost 10 years since 2005. So uh, I'd like to express my uh, thanks to uh, the team, my Mosaic team. Thank you. Uh, 
Maybe, maybe you have very short, uh, uh, a very short question. Time, anyone? No. Okay. And Sasha, go. Thanks for a terrific talk. Um, I, I'm going to show some of some data from around the southern subtropical jet. So, have any of these uh, um, OMI products been in, investigated for that region? Well, sorry, um, I skipped that uh, that important point. I, I haven't yet uh, analyzed the, the uh, subtropical jet location for Southern Hemisphere because I'm um, this topic I'm concentrated on the on the Northern Hemisphere only. However, in future, yeah, I'd like to do that. Yeah, thank you for your comment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So.